Climate change, as we know, is altering the magnitude, frequency, duration of extreme events. And uh, over the recent uh, few weeks and days, we have been reminded of several of these uh, extreme events. Uh, heat and cold wave, tropical cyclones, floods, drought, other natural hazards. Uh, they can cause tens of thousands of deaths and hundreds of thousands of injuries every year around the world. Climate conditions indeed are very influential on some of the The World Health Organization welcomes this atmosphere of health and climate. Uh, it is a unique scientific tool for improving, you know, uh, our response to a number of climate sensitive diseases and health conditions. Of course, you know, for the big show, we are very passionate about the concrete benefit that can arise when health and climate services uh, join uh, joint forces. And the evidence of such benefits continues to expand as some of the examples uh, which you will find in this atlas uh, show. Uh, this morning you talked about malaria, meningitis, many things. Indeed, climate factors are known to have an influence on the dynamics of many of these uh, diseases. We are very passionate about uh, this collaboration because at the end of the day, uh, human capital and human security uh, is you know, the most important asset contributing to sustainable development in every country. And if we can make full use of the scientific uh, data coming from climate and weather data uh, to provide early warning to countries, so that they can prepare and prevent uh, devastations arising from either natural disasters, as we are talking, you know, uh, uh, Hurricane Sandy. And then, of course, uh, many diseases, uh, including malaria, dengue, meningitis, uh, you know, just a few examples. These are what we call climate-sensitive diseases, because, you know, uh, such um, you know, dimensions, climate dimensions like rainfall, humidity, and temperature would influence um, the uh, epidemics, the outbreaks, either directly influencing um, the parasites or the mosquitoes uh, that carry them. And all the animal uh, 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 sectors that are passing the disease crossing the species barrier from animal to human. And we have seen this again and again and again. If I tell you, 80% of the new diseases uh, affecting human in the past 40 years come primarily from the animal sector. I give you one specific example, meningitis. Bacterial meningitis. Every year, when the hot and dusty wind of Hamilton comes, blowing across the meningitis belt, this is a belt covering more than 20 countries in sub-Saharan Africa, we will see the linkage between the hot and dusty wind with outbreak of meningitis. And many children, um, especially children below the age of 15, many of them are affected and when they are affected, you lose lives and those who survive suffer from mental damage. And this is extremely important. So what we do now is, in advance of the coming of the wind, because of this climate information is allow us to do early warning. So what do we do? We pre-position and make sure the vaccination campaign take place before the coming of the wind so that children are protected.